18, and we're starting in verse 4. Where? Luke 15 and 4. When you have it, say amen. amen. What man of you, having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost, until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying, Unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just person, persons which need no repentance. Either that woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. And when she hath found, found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Now that seems a little... They pretty much have the same words in it. The only difference in them is peace and I have. Because, verse 6, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. Then here, rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Amen. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. And he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me, and he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? Come on. I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him. And put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Hallelujah. And bring hither the fattened calf and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. <clears throat> For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Now his elder son was in the field. And as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, 
Thy brother has come, and thy father hath killed the fattened calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry, talking about the older brother, and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he, and he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgress I at any time thy commandment. And yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fattened calf. And he said to him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meat, meat or met, it's meat, that we should make merry and be glad, for this is thy brother. For this thy brother was dead, and is alive again, and was lost, and is found. So go back to verse 4 for a minute. It says, What man of you, having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost, until he find it? And when he hath th found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he come home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. Amen. He said, Rejoice! See, every time someone's saved, the angels rejoice. So Amen. I think we need to rejoice like the angels do. Amen. Very little of that happens, I believe. Come on. Verse 8, Either that woman, having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle, and sweep the house, and seek diligently till she find it. And when she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the piece which I have lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God, over one sinner that repenteth. It says in that last verse that we read, There is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. There is joy. Amen. Now to the parable that we had just stopped reading. Verse 12. No, verse 11. I messed up. And he said, A certain man had had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the son, the younger son, gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his and with pain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, and no man gave to him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, he saw his father saw him, and had compassion, and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be 
called that son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the, the fattened calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. Now was now his elder son was in the field, and he came and drew nigh to the house. He heard music and dancing. When he drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath, hath killed the fattened calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he, and he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee. Neither transgressed at any time thy commandment. And yet thou never havest me a kid that I might be merry with my friends. But as soon as thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fattened calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead and is alive again, and was lost and is found. Thy brother was dead and is alive again. The word prodigal, this is called the prodigal son, this parable is. The word prodigal means wastefully extravagant. It means wasteful. Yeah. The father forgave him. A lot of people today wouldn't do that. Amen. But the father forgave him. Here's a little thing about forgiveness. <clears throat> How sharper than a serpent's tooth it is to have a thankless child, says William Shakespeare's King Lear. Well, then how about a thankless jailbird? Come on. If you want an answer to that one, ask District Judge Philip Killing of Seattle. A young man appeared before him on charges of car theft. The judge saw no reason to keep him locked up while he awaited court action. He released him on his own reckoning. Yeah. A short time later, Killing's own car disappeared. Come on. Police quickly found the stolen car and the one who stole it. Then the judge was in court in a new role, not as the judge, but as a witness against the same young man he had released who stood accused of stealing someone's wheels, someone's car. Amen. A Japanese proverb reminds us that forgiving the unrepentant is like drawing pictures on the water. Ignoring <laughs> sin may gain the sinner's temporary gratitude, but makes no lasting impression. A forgiven car thief is still a car thief if no change of character takes place. How about you? Do you seek to escape justice or be justified by God's grace and Christ's mercy? God offers you liberty, not a license, in the cleansing blood of, Je of Jesus. Amen. God is the father in this story. He's not like the father in this story. Yeah. He is the father in this story. Amen. This is the last of the three parables in this chapter about loss and redemption. <laughs> Following the parable of the lost sheep and the lost coin that Jesus tells. The father 